Hi there, and welcome to a new Plugin Guru video. My name is John Skippy Limkul, and this is the video owner's manual for Mega Macho Drums Part 2. Part 1, we took a look at the installation, the outputs, the instruments, and the multis. In this video, we're going to take a look at the interface, what all the knobs do, the effects that are contained therein. We're going to look at some cool tricks that let you change what's there and then we're going to look at MIDI grooves that are included with the library and how they are probably far more flexible than you think they are okay so before we start real quickly this video and all these videos are sponsored by my website pluginguru.com so head to pluginguru.com for inspiring sounds okay let's take a look at the interface as you can see there is a play mode plaque at the very top center. This is maybe the most important part of the interface because this tells you by looking at it, if it's set to global, anything I change, if I go to um, volume, if I bring volume all the way down, they all come down in volume. If I bring it up, everybody comes up in volume. If I go to the drum mode, this means that each one of these drums the snare's down, but the kick drum's still up because uh, now the kick drum's down. But that one's up. Each drum can have its own settings for everything on the display. So let's bring this one down too. Likewise, if I go to global and I take the volume and I bring it all the way up, all those sounds that had gone away that I'd set the volume at zero, they were all forced to come up to the same volume that I set this to. They all go to the same setting. So those two modes are maybe the most important switching points that you need to be aware of. Because if you want to be tailoring just the snare drum to fit into the mix just right, then you're going to want to be at drum and not global. Now solo transpose is kind of fun. Play a note and then hit solo transpose. and it becomes a single sample across the keyboard. Say we go back to drum. That'd be fun. You can do cool stuff like that. And if you set one part to that, um, it'll remember it when you save the song and then have another kit down here that you drag in. Go like this. And say you want another, uh, let's say, future trap and then change this to be midi channel 2 here's your midi channel assignment so we want this to be midi channel 2 this to be midi channel 1 so anyway you get the idea of what you can do so we've covered the play plaque the next important parameter that you need to know about is this little box right here that says mega macho when you first call up uh, an instrument this will change once you click and drag somewhere to show you the current value that you have that knob set to that you're moving. So if you have filter, it changes and says filter cutoff or resonance. And now resonance works. So the parameter little box display over here is very important to know about. Over here is lock. This is another important button to be aware of and how to use it. Um, Let's do this. The easiest way to show this is to jump right into the ocean. Let's open up Mega Macho Drums to the single instrument MIDI grooves. We're going to dance thing, so let's call up a, let's say, Tribal Council. Let's see what that does here. 
So we have a groove playing. And I notice it's going crazy on this note, right? One of the powers, there's a couple of powers. I've showed you earlier how you can change the kits and that's really fun. But once you get a kit that's close like this, and there's just a couple things that are sticking out. It wasn't designed to work with Dance Fest. It was designed originally for this one. But it pretty works in a cool way. Different vibe, more trashy, except for this one note. So if I take and I set this to drum, and I set it to lock after I play that note, it's now playing the groove, but it's not changing the display, and it's locked. So I'm going to work on just this one sound. I just want to work on this sound to get it to fit the mix. Let's turn on the high pass filter. Give some ambience. Maybe I want it to pan. That'd be fun to pan as, a, as an element, right? So let's go to the toolkit. Let's open up the group editor and make sure select by MIDI is on so that I select this group before I do any changes. Otherwise, it won't affect and I won't hear it. Remember that. That's the one step that might mess some people up. Control click on this and say LFO. Say sign. And if you click the little down to arrow, that means to go down and see the parameters for this. One of the most important ones is to turn off retrigger because retrigger retriggers every time you play a note. So now it's running freely. And then click here where it says Hertz. And let's say quarter notes. So. Maybe half notes. That's better. Now, what if I this the the low pass filter is bypassed? So the little red box means that these effects are all bypassed. So we're using the high pass filter for this sound. When you click it or double click it, it depends on if if these settings are showing. If they're not, double click. You can click right here, believe it or not and go in and change this to be any type of filter. They have all these really cool filters. Band pass, these are peak and notch, multi, different effects, like say, let's say a formant. And let's control click on talk and say LFO sign and click down here and it opens up and makes a new sign for talk. Turn off retrigger, trigger and let's set it to also be a half note. And if I don't like the shape, Make sure you keep, okay? So uh, make sure you have retrigger off because you don't want, otherwise it won't do its thing. So I could go keep doing this. I say for size, let's say I set it in the middle. So it goes the full range, LFO sign. Let's click down here to go take a look at it for size. Turn off, retrigger. And let's say 16th notes. So you see you can get carried away very easily and change something so that now now this doesn't no longer work for that sound. I've taken that sound out of commission from the rest of the Mega Macho interface, but to get certain effects and things like that, you got to take it out. Um, so you can do that at any time with parameters. Just want to make that aware to you. Okay, let's reset it back to normal. Uh, let's see here. Let's make sure we're in global for the moment. So we have volume, you have pan, you have pitch. Now pan, just so you know, I panned all the uh, settings. If there's something where things are panned a little bit, it's all done up here at this top level. 
there's actually another level of editing. To go group editor and mapping. Right here, I could pan the sounds, but it's an offset, which means that if I have this sound panned all the way to the right, when I go all the way from center to the left for the whole kit, if I grab the whole thing and say go to the left, that drum's only going to go halfway. And so it won't ever go to the far left because the maximum range you could set it to would be 50% of, of the whole 100% range. So instead of doing it that way, uh, panning is done at the top level. And that, what that means is if you say global, and I grab this and change this, it's changed it for all of the drums. I've lost the panning information for everything. So I kind of struggled back and forth whether to do it on that lower level or to do it on the top level. And I figured for the most part, you're going to want to hard assign everything to one channel. So you got to go like this, and now everything's output to one, one channel, 100%. So I thought that would be a more useful thing than, um, and plus you can really say everything go to the left or to the right. And if it's offsets, it's going to be all changing in relationship. Some things will be going closer to the left while things are going full to the left and it just gets more com confusing. But just be aware of how that works compared to this. Pitch is three octaves up or down. And there's a lot of times that it's important to change where the starting pitch is, especially when using the pitch envelope generator. We'll get to that in a minute. All right, here's your uh, filter. And as we were looking, the filter cutoff is actually controlled quite a bit by the filter velocity knob down here. These three knobs were added at the 12th hour of making this plugin because I wanted people that had the contact player to have access to these these settings. I was changing them all the time from kit to kit and I realized they needed to be in the interface so it's it's accessible to everybody. So we popped them up and now they work. So if you have the filter cut off all the way down for everything, it's got this huge range because of how wide the filter is. The bottom of the range is is still way up in the filter cutoff spectrum. If you bring the filter cutoff knob down, you can get really dark, like super dark. So you want to make sure that you keep your eye on what your filter velocity sensitivity knob is at. If you're trying to make it sound that's dark, and now you can use the filter EG knob to get snappy and all that kind of stuff. You can't do that if this is maxed out and the filter is maxed out. So if the filter knob is up all the way, it won't get dark enough for you. Now this particular filter, just so you know, it's a special type of filter that does not have resonant peaks. It's got a nice smooth resonance. Let's turn this down so that I have. It never gets that super resonance. Now if I go over here, and I showed you a minute ago how I actually broke the Mega Macho to put the Formant filter. If you use some of the similar low-pass filters, and go to Group Editor and make sure that we're selecting by MIDI. What this allows me to do by, by turning Select by MIDI on, I can now take this note, this snare, and let's change it to be a different low-pass filter. Let's say Daft. And now it's resonant. So now we could go global, uh, just to drums. So that's a snare drum with a really resonant. Daft filter. Or let's say a legacy. No, let's go. Uh, here's what we were using. Um, let's say, let's go Legacy 4. Different sound. So you can play with the filter types. Let's bring the filter up for these guys. So you can make all sorts of 
cool drum sounds from the existing drums, just changing the filter types. But I didn't want to have a resonant peaky. Uh, it's very easy to get painful sounds if you're not careful. But that's how you can change any drum. I could go to this drum here. And let's say we want to use a bandpass. I think I still have, yeah, resonance and filter. I still have. Still have access to it. And let's take this drum. And because we're on drum, let's have this be reverb. It's so easy to make new drum sounds. It's very fun. Very, very fun. So we now have a kit where we have three different types of filter types being used in the same kit. So I hope that shows you some of the flexibility with the filter. What it, what I set it to isn't what it necessarily has to be. Have to be careful because some of these like the effect ones with the formant, these will break the knobs because they don't work under the same rules. It's talk, sharp, and size. There's no cutoff and resonance. So those knobs, they haven't been described and brought up to the top of the interface so that you could change them. So the only way to change them is from down here inside the interface. But you can do it if you want, okay? So let's call this back to normal. Okay, let's keep going. Output, we've talked about this a little bit. This is where you determine your output configuration for each drum sound or the whole kit. If you have it on global, then I'm right now everything is global to the limiter mix. If I go to this, it's just to the stereo mix. And if you look over here in Logic, um, see how it's going above six dB? It's it's very loud, especially when you start playing a number of drums all together. If you change this to the limiter, it won't let it go to where it's distorting the internal mixer configuration of your sequencer. So it's important to keep that in mind when you're looking at this and there's a slight bit of difference. There's a little bit more of a snappiness to the stereo, but you lose a lot of headroom because it's not going through a limiter. And now you need to take care of that stuff in your mixer bus of your sequencer. So. On top of that, we'll look at over here, you've got six tabs, one of them being the compressor. And this compressor is a is the bus compressor, which is a really great compressor, but it's designed not only for here, but it also works really well as an insert in a bus, which means a whole stereo mix goes through it. So if we take this mix, let's go over here to the insert effects. And instead of just a limiter, let's go here and let's add an effect that is the solid bus compressor. And let's reverse the order by holding down on the limiter and drag until we see the dash and let go. So now it's the stereo bus going into the limiter. So I want you to hear the difference between, we're going to bypass this first. So you can hear it up here. Open up the interface again. So here it is. See how everything sticks out? There's not a lot of gluing going on because it's treating each note across the keyboard as an individual sample. So it's a different kind of compression. The attacks are still there. Really compress it. Okay. Now compare that to this on the insert effect. If I turn this on, it's now running the whole mix through one compressor. Hear the pumping? I 
and your control mix. And by the way, inside of 5.2 that just came out, if you close this, you can now also add parallel compression with the feedback compressor, which does kind of the hard compressing and then you can mix at the same time. Sounds great, huge. So you have all sorts of options available if you use this bus. And what's interesting with this is you could choose some sounds, like uh, let's say the hi-hats, go to but, drum, and have these just to go to stereo. They're no longer going into that parallel compression chain. So they're playing on their own, doing their own thing while the kick and the snare and the toms are interacting in the feedback compressor chain. So you have internally two chains available just for the stereo output right here. And then if you have additional outputs, then depending on your output configuration here and in your sequencer that we showed in part one, you could get it to be even more crazy. All right, so I wanted you to see that for the compressor. It's, it's cool that they have both the compressor here, which is on a per drum basis, but not mixed. Or you can use what's normally the limiter and go in and add additional compression there to get the sound to be the whole glue drum kind of sound, which is what you need for the today's sound is the glue drum sound with a little bit of snapping going on. So there you go for that. All right, let's get back on topic. So you got six tabs that you click on the tab right here. And as you click, it changes to show you the six effects. And there's distortion, lo-fi, glitch, compressor, punch, EQ. All right, so you have distortion. If you go in here to the settings, you can turn off high gain. You can set it to mono. And here's a whole different sounding distortion. Okay, lo-fi has a uh, bit resolution and sample rate conversion. There's noise. And then there's filtering for the noise, which will make it darker, like it's older than newer. One trick is if you go in to the tools <clears throat> for the lo-fi, go to noise, set the volume all the way down, control click on this, and set it so that it's listening to the AHDSR. That's the amp envelope. That's the amp envelope that's right here. So now, the noise goes away based on this, instead of just staying and playing flat forever. Okay, so that's very useful. Glitch is maybe my favorite effect in this whole interface, because it can do, uh, it's a MIDI note repeat, basically, with some tricks. So you can set it to, uh, here's quarter notes. And you say how many repeats? We could say uh, four repeats and say 16th notes. Feedback, if the feedback value is up, then there's more feedback so it doesn't decay. So you could set it to all, you know, 64 repeats and have it so that it doesn't decay any or just decays a little bit. Tune is each note that it repeats, you can have it transpose up to an octave up or down. So I could say two semitones. Oh, and my repeats are at one, so. And if you go radical. It's 
it's very cool, very fun stuff. Um, sample start is allowing you to get into the uh, body of the sample. So you don't have that strong attack. Now some tricks, there's all sorts of tricks. Starting with 64th notes, you start to get a pitch, especially when tuning is at zero. Okay, this is tempo based. So it's a hundred, it's a 64th note right now. But um, if I wanna change the pitch, I have to go here. So I could do that. I could double time it. So I just made the MIDI sequence be twice as long. So there's so much to do here. So you need to change your tempo to change the pitch of the glitch uh, once you get above 64th notes. So if you set it to one 256 notes, that tempo is based on here. So if I say, it's playing at 200 beats per minute, 120, and then I could go back here and option, click, and logic in. So depending on the key you want the glitch to play in is determined by the tempo. <laughs> okay, so there's some fussing around and playing around that you got to do to get to do what you want, but it's really fun. Other tricks that are really fun is to say like that. Okay, now we're a high in pitch. So let's transpose the whole thing down. And put the high pass filter. Here it repeats. And then bring up the attack. Find all sorts of. All right, so let's say we like this and I wanna save this to reference it later. I wanna show you what to do. I put a special folder called user patches inside of the Mega Macho library that you can't see right now. So we're gonna do a little abracadabra and it will appear. So if we go over here and we go files, save as, and here's dance fest. Let's call it Butterfly Fest. And don't save it into the standard library kit folders and stuff, but down here where it says user patches, open that, save it there. Then come up here and hit the little refresh. And now when you open this, there's a user patches folder that shows up. And there's Butterfly Fest. So if you create patches, save them to the user patches and then that folder will show up in the list once you've saved something there. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna call back this kit, the standard kit version. <laughs> uh, compressor we covered a minute ago. You saw how the compressor here works on per drums, whereas if you go to the uh, limiter and then go down to the insert effects by hitting the tool wrench in the full version of contact, you can't do this from the player, and hitting insert effects, right here is where you can add the feedback compressor, and then reverse the order so that the limiter is still controlling it so it doesn't drive your overdrive your outputs, um, and then start having fun. Uh, Punch is the transient designer. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let's turn off the feedback compressor. <laughs> Anything from 0% plus is gonna bring out more attack. Anything in the other direction is gonna remove attack, which is cool. Go global, turn it on for everybody. Nice attack, here we take it away. Soften it up if you need it. And then sustain allows you to 
either suck the body out or bring it up. Very useful, especially if you start using the lock on a specific drum just to get it to fit in the mix exactly how you want it to fit. That's where it becomes really nice. EQ, this is kind of a special EQ. This is the bus comp EQ, which is a separate effect that Native Instruments sells for like $99. Same as the bus, the bus compressor is also a separate $99 effect. They're both built into Contact 5. Um, this is three bands of fully parametric sweeping EQ, which means you can turn it on, have a really narrow range, Sounds really good. Or bring it down higher, or bring it to a, a wider width and it becomes less peaky. And by the way, um, there's assignable MIDI controllers to everything. All of the on and offs, all the knobs um, over here under the auto for the assigning, you can assign, um, if you go to MIDI, there's stuff already pre-assigned. If you go to host, this is what's happening inside of Logic. And you just grab any controller you want and drag it over the on and off of the EQ. And now you've registered controller number eight, host parameter number eight is now set up for turning on and off the EQ. So if you go look at automation, it should show up here. Go to number eight. Here it is at the very bottom of the list because I assigned it. So now I can... Okay, so you see how you can assign controllers to do things. And then finally we get to the envelopes. Um, I'm going to talk about this just for a minute. The, uh, the AMP EG's got a hold parameter, which is really usable. It's very useful for all, all sorts of cases where it's set to global. And maybe these ring out too much. So you can shape. The hold is how long does it hold at max before it starts to decay? So I can take away all that boominess. Just get the attack. If you want. The um, filter, EG, it works like a standard filter. You have to have the filter cut off down. You have to take a look at your filter knob to see where it's at so you have as much range as you want. And then you can bring up the intensity. If you want it to sweep in, you bring up the attack. And then decay. OK. Uh, when you get to working with the filter this dark, some sounds like the bass drums sound great. Other sounds don't sound so great because they don't have that low energy to excite the filter. So you have to go to the cutoff and bring it up. Hi-hats even more than the snare. So once you do something dark like this, you might need to go through some of the drums. Get their brightness back to where you actually hear more than just the, ta the attack. Okay, so there's the filter EG. Pitch EG goes up or down three octaves. So you can turn that on and let's see, go global, turn the drums all the way up. And 
Now, if you have sweeping like this, you might want to turn down the total pitch. Back to where it sounds about right. Okay, I've reset the kit, and I'm going to show you delay and the verbs real quick. So delay is a... Uh, let's go to global. So there's delay time, which... As you can see, we have it set up here to sync, so there's a number to look at. So here's quarter notes. All right, I want to show you one trick. So when you set it to sync, it's going to follow your clock. And it's almost too perfect. So once you have close to where you want, turn sync off and hold down shift and maybe move it a little bit. just to give it a little off so it's not perfect. Otherwise you get like the phasey repeats the same things. I don't like that. So turn sync off and now you can adjust the time with the shift key just a little bit. Uh, width determines whether it's a stereo left, right, or else if it's mono. Now there's no stereo. Uh, damp. No damp. Lots of damp. So uh, as you crank it up, it's more filtering, so it gets darker with each repeat. And then feedback is how many times does it repeat before it fades out. Lower the feedback, the less amount of repeats you're going to have. Tone verb and ambiverb are both convolution reverbs. And tone verb, as I've shown in the other videos, is set up for more unique, weird, crazy kind of sounds, while ambiverb is more a list of standard normal reverbs. I'm not going to go through those because there's lots of them. But real quickly, the IR size is the uh, impulse response size, which actually is playing back the, it's changing the playback speed of that. So that if you make it a, a higher value, it's now one and a half times longer than what the time says. So if it says it's two seconds, it's now three seconds in size. If I go the other direction, it brings it down to 50%, so now it's only one second instead of the, the normal two seconds it's supposed to be. And it achieves that by playing back the sample either twice as fast or half as fast. Okay, so we can set this back around 100%. Pre-delay is pre-delay before it comes in. High-pass filter is a filter that removes low end, and it's broken. Um, it won't start to work until about, let's see here if we bring this up so you can hear it. Right there it's in, and there it's out. So there's no sweeping. If you go to the low pass filter, as you bring the low pass filter down, you can hear it sweeping down the frequencies. Right? You can't do that with the highest pass filter right now. Um, you can from this point on, but I've reported it a number of times and it's still not fixed. So hopefully they will fix that at some point. What I want to show you is how to make your own convolution reverbs. Uh, so let's go to tone verb. Let's call it, I'm going to use a synthy chordy thing. So I want to say, let's uh, set up something. And to do these, you got to click and then scroll down to get to the chords. Let's say a chord. But I want to use this chord from the song that I'm working on. Minor. It's actually from, that's actually from the machine library. So check this out. So we're on tone verb. So we go down to the send effects to convolution number one. This is the tone, and you'll see it says synth fox here, right? Take your new chord, whatever it is, as a wave file, and just drag it over the top and let go. you go. Now there's a couple cool things in here that um, we weren't able to bring up to the interface. One of them is this tail parameter which you can click and drag and this gives you the ability to determine settings for the early which is this part of the sample and the late. So you can have it so it's full for the first 
early part and then go to late and bring up the high pass filter. So you've got part of it, see how it changes the sound? So part of it's... Let's make this sooner in. I think you've lost access to the Mega Macho libraries. You can go to the factory libraries, which there's a ton of. But if you want to get back to those, you have to reload the kit. So just be aware. <laughs> if you do that and then you change your mind, you got to go back. And now you can go to Tone Verb. So that knob. Let's say we go back to a chord. So I could go editing to the send effects to that convolution reverb, and I could change the tail to be at a different place besides there. And then bring up the high pass filter for the second half. And do the same thing. So make sure that you play around with the, this and these parameters because they give you some cool flexibility to have one type of sound for one half of the reverb and then change the sound for the second half of the reverb, okay? So that's the basics of the interface. Okay, so we thought we were done, but there's one area I didn't cover in my first pass. So I'm back to add to the video because I wanna to talk to you quickly about the three knobs in the bottom right corner, the A, F, and D velocity knobs. These are important knobs to know how to use. So let me show you real quickly. Let's do this, let's get a MIDI file going. So let's go down here. I'm gonna to go to turnstile. And it sounds a little something like this. So first of all, if you wanna be legit like to the vintage drum machines, there's no velocity to the um, amplifier or to volume. So you turn that off. Gotta to go to global. Now there's no velocity, it's full volume. If you bring it up, you can see that certain things get softer. So you can control the, the mix of some of the brighter elements from the darker elements by using the amplifier knob. Okay. Now if you bring down the filter and then bring up the velocity to filter, you can get some brightness control happening. Then the last knob it back up right is decay and this is maybe my favorite because with the, the decay set, set somewhere in the middle you can go in and have it so that when you play soft to hard oh another trick i wanted to point out on the on the amp if you set the decay to be short you have to make sure the release matches the decay and it's a little shorter than what it looks like over here Okay, so now I'm gonna play soft. And you can find a place in here. Where by velocity, I can go from super short. And in these sequences, and one thing I love with Logic, and a lot of other sequences don't have this, is it has the ability to go over here to the extended parameters what they call dynamics and either can compress it to where everything is fixed so now I automatically go like that and I can bring up the velocity to set it to be a max no dynamics right or I can do the other way around let's say velocity back to zero and dynamics let's go the other direction and it expands it so something that's kind of soft goes all the way down to like the lowest values and something that's kind of hard goes to the maximum values so now we've expanded the range, so now you can play Decay to get some good variety by having the Decay at max and the range be exaggerated at velocities. Now if I was going to play with this and take this one out, one other thing that would... This snare hits just once in it, right? So go to Drum. Bring up some reverb and let's use one of the fun ones like Sunburn. And 
this tom, I want this to always be long decay. And I want it to be decaying down in pitch. Go boom, right? So we actually take it, so it starts really high. Try to get the release to match. Now you bring down the pitch once you've got that nailed. snare and there's a little side stick that's hitting right uh, for this note right watch this keyboard this will tell you what notes are being played so you can know what you can do to things so let's take that one let's give it a like a different hit like either a maybe a chord hit Maybe a bass hit would be cool. There's all sorts of places you could take this. Or just a really tight room for a whole different vibe. So let's take it up here to the the reverbs say reverb and they also have the length of time to them, so let's see. And then bring up the high pass filter so it's not so thunky. Maybe not. There we go. That's cool. But let's take this and make it shorter for the impulse response. There we go. And then the shake is being used a lot, so let's put it through. Punch to soften the attack. So there's all sorts of ways to play this stuff. And this hi hat's being used. Let's put. This. So you can take things and subtly add these elements we've shown you about. Let's also put glitch on this for fun. And instead of being a really fast one, let's say like um. Eighth note triplets going up in pitch. It needs to be slower like that. There we go. And let's, and let's bring up the amp and the filter for this one, so that way the feedback will come down. Maybe it doesn't need to be triplets, just eighth notes. That's cool. Seven is a number. There we go. So you get the idea. So you can take an add glitch, add the reverbs. So, all right. So that's the interface. Now let's look at MIDI grooves a little more closer. Okay. So I've called up Beast. Let's make these go away. Actually, we don't even need the browser for a minute. All right, I want to load up another MIDI groove. So we go to the Mago Macho Drums, single instruments for now. Let's say Thrift Shot, just for fun. Let's change kits.
Okay, there's a whole lot of... Is it this? Yeah. This sample is playing all the time. So let's go to drums. This also needs to be shorter. Okay. Now, the way that I design these kits, there's a whole bunch of kicks and snares. So let's hit the over there now. So we just open this up, give a little more room, find the kick, and then play, and transpose it. Same as the snare. So there's seven snares. So one, there's one, three, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine snares in Maximus to play with. And I could take the second snare it's on this one, I think, right? Oh, let's have that go down one more note. Let's take this, go to drums. Let's hit lock. Let's add a little punch to that snare. Ambience. EQ. So I can play with that sound until I have it exactly where I want. So with all the kits and all these grooves, the thing I want to point out is that you can take stuff that's not made for one thing this came from trap hop type of a groove, right? I could go to Mega Macho. Let's try something else. Let's go single instruments. Here's a dubstep patch. More of these will be coming in August. A whole bunch more. Global. All right, so it's really that tambourine that's driving me nuts, right? So go drum. Lock is still on. Ah. <laughs> so let's go back to Maximus. Make sure you turn lock off. Oh, we wanted not to do the whole thing. Um, and once again, play with the kits to find a kit that's close to what you want. How about that? No. Delete the layered snares. There's only one. Transpose around. Say, I want that hi hat. Instead of the hi-hat that I'm using here, transpose that up. There. So you can play with the kicks and the snares. There's 
seven kicks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and up to 10 snares. So when you find a groove, let's do something a little bit more traditional. Let's take a pop groove. Drive pop. Okay, change kits. Maybe you want to do a vintage thing, right? Not quite the right sounds yet. So here's our kick. Transpose it. That's better. Different hi hat. See how we, it's, it's it's easy to play around with. So, the lesson to learn from the MIDI grooves part here is that the MIDI files are set up to play basically usually one kick, one or two snares. For I'm not doing really massive, big layered things. And it's easy to go into your sequencer, um, depending on how easy your sequencer is to edit this stuff. Um, some sequencers, it's harder than others. But you can take the notes and drag it around to different ones. That's the bass drum, so it doesn't sound right. There you go. So there's a whole lot of fun to play with. And that concludes the video manual. So I hope you got some stuff out of this that will help you um, with exploring all sorts of things. All right, well, send requests to Facebook um, to let me know additional videos you want to see on Mega Macho if you have any questions. Um, and I'll be happy to show them to you. Okay, so I hope this helped. And thank you again to all of you that are buying the library. Very much appreciate it. All right. See ya.